Hi there. Thanks for watching. I'm Dr. Justin Mogilski, and this is a recorded narration of my poster for the 2021 Human Behavior and Evolution Society Conference. Over the next several minutes, I'll be running through an abbreviated version of the argument that my colleagues and I present in our forthcoming chapter in the Oxford Handbook of Evolutionary Psychology and Romantic Relationships. At the bottom of this poster, you'll find two QR codes that you can scan with your smartphone's camera. The one on the left links to a preprint of our chapter. The one on the right links to the OSF or Open Science Framework pre-registration for our ongoing international project, which I will discuss at the end. Without further ado, I present Evolution, Multi-Partner Mating, and Sexual Ethics, a framework for a differentiating infidelity from consensual non-monogamy by Drs. Justin Mogilski, David Rodriguez, Justin Laymiller, and Rhonda Balzarini. Let's begin with our premises. Multi-partner mating refers to romantic, sexual, or otherwise intimate courtship between one individual and two or more concurrent people. This term encompasses quite a bit, but stands in sharpest contrast to monogamy, which we define as courtship between exclusively two people. Monogamy characterizes the majority of romantic relationships worldwide, but multi-partner mating is observed in every known society. Multi-partner mating has been a core focus of study in the evolutionary sciences because having several concurrent partners introduces different reproductive opportunities and challenges for women and men. By mating with more than one partner, men are able to produce more children because their inexpensive gametes or sperm are readily dispersed. Thus, they can increase their number of children by having sex with multiple female partners. Women, on the other hand, are obligated to commit gestational resources to a single fertilized egg for nine months and therefore do not benefit from mating with multiple partners in the same way. Nevertheless, women may pursue multi-partner mating for other reasons, such as to sample and secure better partners, that is mate switch, to produce offspring with diverse genes, or to secure investment from several partners at once. These divergent motives for men and women can cause conflict when one partner's pursuit of an extra pair relationship is at odds with the other partner's reproductive interests. And this is what we call sexual conflict. For example, if a man's female partner becomes sexually involved with other men, he risks cuckoldry or unwitting investment in genetically unrelated offspring. If a woman's male partner becomes involved with other women, she risks her partner diverting his time and resources to children who are genetically unrelated to her. Men and women are thus both motivated to pursue multi-partner mating, albeit for different reasons, but also to restrict their partner from doing the same. Now, organisms have diverse strategies for resolving the sexual conflict caused by multi-partner mating, but infidelity is one of the most well-studied. Infidelity is when extra pair courtship occurs within an exclusively single partner or monogamous relationship. So in monogamous relationships, partners mutually agree, though often implicitly, to refrain from extra pair sex and romance. Now, this is reasonable because there are persistent threats to reproduction caused by multi-partner mating such as cuckoldry, domestic violence, lethal intrasexual competition, and sexual disease transmission. If both partners faithfully commit to this, contract, this social contract, these risks are prevented, thus mutually benefiting each partner. Infidelity is thus when one partner defects from this social contract, that is, they form an extra pair relationship while deceiving their partner into believing otherwise. Now, strategically, this causes the duped partner to restrict their own, but not their partner's extra pair courtship. In other words, by subverting their partner's consent to engage in an extra pair relationship, those who practice infidelity reap the benefits of having multiple partners themselves, that is access to sexual or romantic partner variety, while also avoiding the costs of their partner doing the same, such as cuckoldry and resource diversion. Now, the absence of a partner's informed consent is a key feature of infidelity. If an individual were to know about an in-pair partner's current or potential extra pair relationships, this would permit them to calculate the impact of these additional relationships on their in-pair relationship quality. For example, someone who knows their partner is having sexual contact with another person can assess the likelihood of um, potential pregnancy or sexual disease transmission and take precaution if necessary, such as by ensuring that their partner uses safe sexual practices. 
Likewise, someone who knows that their partner is forming other emotionally intimate attachments can anticipate how that partner might allocate their time, their effort, or resources among each attachment. And then perhaps decide that they should form their own extra pair relationships and or leave that partner if the relationship becomes inequitable or costly. At the heart of consent then, I think, is freedom of association, whereby people are not inhibited from leaving an inauspicious or disadvantageous uh, a relationship that is not paying off. This freedom of association that is being allowed to form extra pair intimate relationships then creates a biological mating market based on partner choice, wherein partners compete for each other's commitment rather than coerce it. It's unsurprising then that non-consensual non extra pair relationships tend to be secretive those who successfully convince their partner to adhere to an exclusivity contract that they themselves do not follow are able to subvert the mating market and thereby their partner's choice. In this sense, infidelity is a solution to sexual conflict, albeit a risky one. Evidence suggests that forming a romantic or sexual partner outside of an established pair bond without the consent of one's partner, increases sexual disease transmission, psychological distress, uh, causes relational instability and dissatisfaction, financial hardship, and can disrupt families. Discovering an infidelity is often experienced as betrayal or an attachment injury, whereby a previously reliable partner subsequently appears less predictable, trustworthy, or fair. Infidelity may also prompt revenge in the form of physical aggression, or property damage or retributive infidelity, revenge infidelity. And in extreme but not infrequent circumstances, it can lead to intimate partner violence and homicide. So infidelity may thereby promote a vengeful cycle of deception, contest, and injury between partners that escalates mutual reprisal until the cost of maintaining multiple partnerships or that pair bond overwhelms the benefit. Thus, as a strategy for satisfying the motive to mate with multiple partners, infidelity is decidedly zero sum. One person gains at the other's expense. Certainly there are advantages to long-term cooperative partnerships in which each individual sacrifices some personal optimum for a relatively higher net collaborative yield. And these are called positive sum relationships, such as when, ch when children are afforded security and environmental stability by multi-parental care. But the greater net individual benefit of defecting in a trust game, that is when one partner cheats but the other does not, suggests that humans evolved mating psychology is configured to motivate calculated deception or infidelity. So what is our argument? Well, we propose that consensual non-monogamy is an alternative strategy to infidelity for resolving the challenges of sexual conflict caused by multi-partner mating. Now, CNM is a collection, CNM, consensual non-monogamy, is a collection of romantic relationship practices and structures, such as polyamory, open relationships, or swinging, whereby partners agree that it is permissible to have sexual contact or form intimate relationships with other people. That is, rather than entirely restrict a partner's extra pair behavior, partners develop and then they follow guidelines to minimize the harmful or unpleasant consequences of managing multiple partners. Now, compared to infidelity, people in CNM relationships then seek and secure rather than subvert a partner's informed consent, thus why it's called consensual non-monogamy. That is, rather than hide their extra pair attractions, they acknowledge and they share them, allowing both partners to discuss and negotiate the boundaries of their relationship. Now, researchers and practitioners have noted that the relationship maintenance practices of, of uh, consensual non-monogamy, CNM, such as communication and honesty about attraction to others, jealousy, and sexual health, may help minimize the undesirable features of multi-partner mating. That is, by refusing to subvert a partner's consent, people practicing CNM may better resolve the challenges of multi-partner mating and thereby create higher quality or more stable relationships than those who seek multi, multiple partners through infidelity. So we are comparing consensual non-monogamy to infidelity here. 
Now, existing evidence suggests that people who practice CNM have some success in doing this. For example, people practicing CNM report similar or safer sexual health practices on average compared to unfaithful monogamous individuals, though some exceptions do exist. They often establish agreements with partners to facilitate comfort with extra pair relationships, and they report unique benefits to forming multiple intimate relationships. Indeed, people who practice CNM report relationship outcomes that are similar to those reported within monogamous relationships. However, the quality of these relationships does seem to depend on whether individuals who pursue CNM benefit from its unique advantages, such as the freedom to form several concurrent intimate partnerships, or to have their relationship needs filled by different partners, to have more social interaction with new people, or to experiment with their sexual expression. Based on recent evidence, CNM appears to improve relationship satisfaction more than monogamy does for some people. So those who practice CNM and those who commit infidelity are thus each pursuing multi-partner relationships, but CNM appears to produce more positive relationship outcomes, again, at least for some people. It should be noted, however, that the prevalence of challenges that detract from relationship quality, such as cuckoldry and partner abandonment within CNM relationships has not yet been established. Now, although people practicing CNM do not perceive extra pair involvement as infidelity, as long as partners adhere or agree or, or stick to the rules and boundaries of the relationship agreement, they do appear to share with monogamous individuals the motive to preserve valuable relationships. In the research that I've published, I found no difference between CNM and monogamous relationships in relationship satisfaction or frequency of mate retention though only if people, uh, people who are practicing CNM report about their primary partner as opposed to their secondary partner. Um, they tend to report less mate retention with their secondary partner. They also reported being in a relationship with their primary partner for a longer period of time and viewed this partner as a more desirable long-term mate compared to their non-primary partners or their secondary partners. I've also found that those in CNM relationships are more confident that their primary compared to the secondary partner will not engage in infidelity, which defined for them was extra pair behavior that violates the bounds of their relationship agreement. And they are more distressed when thinking about their primary partner cheating. Other research has shown that within polyamorous relationships, people report more relationship more relationship quality, that is more commitment, better communication with their primary partner, even though they report spending more time on sexual activity with secondary partners. So this suggests that those who are monogamous and non-monogamous both maintain and protect partnerships that satisfy their relationship needs and desires, their primary relationships. But rather than depend on a single partner, people practicing infidelity or CNM share the responsibility of need fulfillment across networks of people, as opposed to concentrating it on a single pair bond. The difference between infidelity and CNM then is a matter of ethics. People who practice CNM secure their partner's consent to form these relationship networks, which helps each partner account and adjust for the impact of extra pair relationships on in-pair relationship quality. Those who commit infidelity do not. Our argument then is that it may be fruitful to view CNM and infidelity as alternative strategies for overcoming the challenges and conflicts of multi-partner mating. We predict that by developing ethical strategies for resolving the adaptive challenges caused by multi-partner mating, CNM practitioners may do a better job of achieving sexual cooperation than those who commit infidelity at least insofar as partners adhere to their relationship agreement. Now, a comprehensive empirical index of, of, the, of the relationship maintenance strategies that people use in multi-partner relationships to maintain those relationships is presently undocumented. So how do people in CNM relationships manage their extra pair attractions? Do these strategies actually resolve the recurrent challenges of sexual conflict, such as cuckoldry or in-pair divestment? And how do how faithfully do people engage in CNM's best practices? This is precisely what we aim to address in our international project. You can find an in-depth description of this work and its predictions 
via the OSF project link at the bottom of the poster. So what's our strong claim from all of this? What should you engage with? What are we engaging with? Well, this is it. We anticipate that the data we're collecting will reveal that monogamy and CNM are each a more stable strategy for resolving the hardships of sexual conflict than infidelity. So again, comparing each of these strategies to infidelity, not necessarily one another. That is when practice is intended, monogamy and CNM each safeguard against the, var against variation in relation in the, against the variation in relationship satisfaction, conflict, and health caused by multi-partner mating. Furthermore, we anticipate that how well CNM accomplishes this will depend on partners' relationship maintenance practices, what they actually do to maintain the relationship and manage those extra pair attractions, how well these practices resolve the recurrent challenges of multi-partner mating, that is how well do those strategies resolve jealousy and partner competition and sexual health concerns, paternal uncertainty concerns, resource diversion, or uh, concerns about social condemnation or stigma. And then of course, partners' personalities. What we've learned in, over the past several decades is that personality seems to moderate most people's engagement with pretty much everything. So accounting for this as well. Our goal is to produce an evidence-based, data-driven, theoretically coherent framework to describe which multi-partner relationship maintenance practices produce better outcomes for different people and, the, and relationships. And we hope that this information will help individuals navigate the complexities of maintaining positive some relationships among multiple intimate partners. Thank you.